Hi everybody, Hi guys. it's Chris here and Amanda and we are here for the final live of 2019. Ooh. It is, <laughs> <laughs> is that like the celebration <laughs> of, um, <laughs> so yes it is our final live. Um, we are very very excited to have been doing these live for a full year pretty, yeah, much. pretty much. It's been really really cool and it's been great um, sort of interacting with everyone, seeing so many mm. people watching so just a big big thank you yeah. first of all. Thank you everyone. Yeah and we've had like so many lovely comments of like people yeah. coming up to us and yeah. being like we love seeing you so um, yeah. yeah it's been a part, on, part on our backs for that. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, thank you so much. And we just thought we'd catch up with you guys just before the Christmas break yeah. and just talk about 2019 yeah. and actually what's been going on in beauty this year because it's been a big one. Yes, um, most you know, definitely. We thought we'd round up five of the biggest stories of the year and I don't think it's going to be any surprise to anyone to hear that brow lamination yes. was the term of the industry yeah, this out. year. Mm. I mean, nobody ever thought anything would come along and be as big or kind of make such an impact on the industry as microblading did, but brow lamination has. Mm. And it looks like that trend is set to continue right into 2020. So if you're not offering it on your treatment menu now, it might be something to think about for yes, next year. Yes, definitely. And it's one and, um, in the Google Trends of the year as well. Like that was right up there as one of the big trend, trending terms. So just so many people looking at it and, and are interested in it. So yeah, that's definitely one and it's just come on so quickly as well it really has yeah. hit and it's um, a really good one to get on board with yeah. um, some of the other things so the government pledged um, more support more support for beauty therapists in aesthetics mm. um, at the same time as that in a way we've seen other things like the BACN trying to remove therapists from the from being trained so mm. it, it's just one of those things where there's been so much debate on both sides um, yeah. And it's something that we know is going to continue on into 2020 as well. Yeah, I think the beauty and aesthetics debate is not going anywhere. We're still going to be hearing a lot more about it in 2020. And I guess a lot more about what the role of the beauty therapist is in mm. aesthetics. So, um, yeah. Um, yes. Somebody end... is asking, where's your yellow top from? <laughs> um, it's from Bershka. So... <laughs> there we go. This, I don't know where this is from, if anybody wants a shirt. But, um... Um, but yeah, so BT Aesthetics, let us know what you think, but I'm sure there's going to be a lot of stuff about that next year. Yes, and it's the same in a way as well, um, yes. the uh, and aesthetic rules. Um, Another so, big one. Yeah, that's something where local councils haven't um, been allowing beauty therapists to use an aesthetic or yeah. prescribe it to... Um, to, to clients and as well we've seen it, that's going on as well we've had a recent article about mm. uh, therapists struggling to get contraindications and GP clearance as well yeah. so again it's it's sort of one that is just continuing to bubble on and it has throughout the year yeah I think it's one of those things that as beauty treatments become more advanced um, I think there definitely needs to be more collaboration between the medical industry and the beauty industry yeah and so I think that's where a lot of these topics have kind of arisen from mm. Obviously, no surprise that changes to minimum wage, pension and sick pay were a big thing for you guys this year. We know that every time the government raises rates, whether it's um, national living wage, national working wage, business rates, it has an impact on you mm. and your business. And obviously, as April 1st rolls around in 2020, I'm sure there'll be more changes yes. and we will keep you up to date on what they are. But it's so important to stay abreast of this and make sure that you are on, on it, yeah. yeah, and obviously last week we saw obviously the the election and mm. the big B word is coming in yes. January. Yes. So yes. there's going to be a whole lot of changes to business, and with that, I think one of the other big stories was that you know even with you know changes to wages and things like mm. that, beauty therapists still are one of the uh, worst paid kind of jobs. Uh, being a beauty therapist is still one of the lowest paid wages, unfortunately. Yeah. So. It's sort of like the value of the industry and where mm. things are going and how businesses are able to afford therapists and you know keep mm. those like really high trained therapists still in the in the industry. Yeah, beauty ranks seventh in the top ten yeah. worst paid, and it says that a beauty therapist can expect to be paid just seventeen thousand one hundred and seventy nine pounds a year. So you know wages. That's another issue. Something yeah. that's, again, I think we're going to hear more about that in 2020. And like Chris said, Brexit's going to affect a lot of things. So again, we're going to do our best to try and keep you up to date with what yeah. that means. 
yeah, and obviously we'll be doing you know, plenty of stuff on the website, plenty of stuff in live. We're going to have more interviews in live as well, yes. which is something very so exciting. It'd be nice to know if, you, if there's anybody you guys yeah. think that we should inter interview or who you'd love to hear from, you know, someone who's a hero of yours or somebody you really admire in the industry, uh, because we want to make sure we're delivering the content that you guys want and need. Yeah, and I thought as well we would just touch on some of the things that we're quite proud of and like things that have happened that have been really exciting as well in the uh, in for us at work. Yeah. So I guess for me, like I, I we started the social surgery column in the um in the PB magazine so that's been something that's been Great. really exciting um, I've really enjoyed writing that we are potentially renaming that so as well if you have any <laughs> digital something we need or something like that maybe <laughs> DD haven't figured it out but that's been really great and as well doing talks at uh, PB North at Ireland for aesthetic medicine as well mm. I've loved doing that and it's been a really great opportunity yeah, and I think for us as well, you know, we've been upping our digital in, like output this year, and one of the things I've loved is we've had a lot of really great hot topics on the website this year, yeah. so we've been hosting a lot more of the debates for you guys and letting you get your opinions out there, and some of them have been so good, so thank you to everybody who's contri contributed, and we hope to do way more of that next year, and also doing the lives of this one <laughs> as well, Aww. and then, oh, the team, dream team, yeah. um, so you'll be seeing a lot more Chris and I in yes. 2020, as well as Eve. And, and we have a new person yeah. as well called Eleanor, so you'll be seeing her on the lives from 2020, so watch out, and if you see her at any events, say hi. Yes, so like we said, this is the last one of the year, mm -hmm. um, but we will be back uh, probably the second week of January, because we, uh, so we got, we're sort of coming back here and there yeah. um we're taking yes. a bit of a break yes <laughs> christmas break so we hope break. everybody has an amazing christmas have a great christmas guys great new year yeah. we know that this has been one of the busiest sort of couple of weeks so yeah. you everyone deserves an amazing rest great new year put your feet up yeah and have a great time and uh yeah, yeah. well we'll see you in 2020 we'll see you in 2020 <laughs> see you bye guys, guys.